This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Secret Square. Could it be? Bob Denver. Karen Valentine. Walt. The cast of Soap. Henry Winkler. Mr. Ed and Wilbur. Marty J. Wiley. Mark Midbauer. And in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... There's Tuesday at 6, Wednesday's at 10, Thursday's at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin, um... Oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um... Welcome to the place your parents didn't understand. The world of 60s and 70s television. Welcome to Vast Wasteland. Welcome home. Hello and welcome to Vast Wasteland, the video journal of 60s and 70s TV. I'm Mark Schmidbauer, along with Wilbert Neal and Marty Wiley. Well, tonight it's another, it's our second annual, no, not annual, it's been <laughs> our second uh, grab bag show. Because Concept, you requested that's it. That's right. Yeah. Concepts that we didn't think we could do a whole show on, but we thought this is an interesting thing, but just not interesting enough to do a whole show on. <laughs> so, <laughs> and so it's more grab bag tonight. Uh, but before we get into that, we want to tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6. Wednesdays at 10, and Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV. Cable 21. That's the old song. Is it? Did I they think. lose that? I don't oh, know. No. I wish they would. <laughs> the young Republicans. <laughs> uh, uh, also, uh, if you want to write to us, you want to write, write to box 15, 14, 11, Columbus, Ohio, 43215. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. We're trying. Our psychic oh, energies are here. down. <laughs> the last show got us out. No! We all did it. <laughs> Anyways. Well, you know I'll, what we meant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that one. That one. <laughs> Boy, am I tired. <laughs> well, also, before we get into the next show, we want to tell you about an exciting new development here in Vast Wasteland. Uh, starting next season, we're going to branch out, as it were, Moving beyond just television to the vast world of popular culture. We're going to start doing something kind of like the old NBC mystery movie or name of the game. We're going <laughs> to kind of have rotating segments. So we're going to have our regular television concept, just like the show you see now, with the three of us sitting here. And then we're going to have a new show just about comic books with Wilbert and myself. And then 
the potpourri show with Wilbert and Marty. <laughs> and the potpourri will just be everything else about popular culture. Potpourri. That's potpourri. <laughs> Hence the name. And the scent is on the core, yeah. not on the paper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense to me. <laughs> so, so be tuning in for that. Uh, of course, we've got the big uh, the rerun next time, uh, and then going into our um, uh, whatever they call it, the specialty week or whatever. <laughs> Special, Special programming, programming week. week. That's programming the week. term. Oh, what's what special it? about it this time? I don't know. No, okay. don't, don't know. <laughs> it's going to be really special. Yeah, real special. <laughs> so, be tuned in for that. And then, the, the brand new, all new Bass Wasteland. <laughs> or new some old, but mostly new. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> and now, on the grab bag. <laughs> And Wilbert, you have the, the first pick of the of the new bag tonight. <laughs> bag o' grab. <laughs> hmm. The question and sign in, please. What about Kodiak? Good what question. About, what about yeah, Kodiak? Yeah, Mr. Patterson would like to know about that. <laughs> okay. Well, what about Kodiak, we asked? Kodiak, you say? Yes, that's what we asked, Kodiak. Kodiak, a police drama. Which it was first telecast on September 13th, 1974. Last telecast. 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 Oh, you were in my algebra class. October 11th, 1974. Well, that Kodiak just didn't last a real long time. <laughs> well, but wasn't it a replacement for the Brady's? Well, now that is quite possible. Yeah, it could right have been right that. Uh, this was mentioned to me by somebody who knew. <laughs> It could have been the fact that a it was Brady first fan. done, there but then <laughs> after the Brady's finally broke off, they would just show it and show it and show it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how many episodes would it have six? been? Gee. <laughs> well, now we've got to figure that it was probably about six. About six. <laughs> about six. About and six he had a episodes. snowmobile. Well, um, Cal Kodiak McKay was Clint Walker. And he was a cop with an unusual beat in this short-lived series. He was a member of the Alaska State Patrol. Responsible for 50,000 square miles of rugged country and all the criminals, avalanche victims, and squabbling miners contained therein. <laughs> <laughs> he worked alone most of the time, traveling by four-wheel drive trucks, snowmobiles, skis, snowshoes, or whatever. Abraham Lincoln M. Hook was his Eskimo friend and confidant, and this was played by Abner Butterman. <laughs> and, of mm -hmm. course, there was Mandy, played by Maggie Bly. And it was filmed on location in Alaska. Like the romantic interest, that would be Mandy. Probably. Well, quite possibly. I guess. Right along with that pipeline, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, now we could we could There's find out that, that Mandy was actually his little daughter or something. I don't know. But there's that Kodiak. And that's for the DJ who asked about it, or who actually told about it. <laughs> It was on and ABC. For that question, you receive the knowledge of nothing. knowing that we talked about it here on the show. <laughs> you were first on this, on our second grab our bag main episode. Episode. Yes, and now, you. The second. Grab Amaze bag. your friends. <laughs> okay. Yes. Favorite Bill Cosby production. Oh well, let's see. How, how many Bill Cosby productions did we have? I mean, you have. I mean, is this is this ones that Bill actually produced? Or is this that he had anything to do with? I guess that he had anything to okay, do with. Okay, we'll say. Well, so you got to include I Spy, obviously. And yeah. Fat Albert. And Fat Albert. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I could say right off Fat Albert probably wouldn't have been my favorite of all. Time. <laughs> it wasn't Chris Rock's favorite either. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Chris Rock would tell you about that one. <laughs> Let's see, my favorite was... But Chris did have a point about that one. I mean, I didn't until he brought it to my attention in his, in his comedy routine. That did I realize, yeah, that show did make black people look stupid. So <laughs> well, I think well, that's about a consequence of being sucked Innovative, into, but stupid. <laughs> sucked into the cartoon realm. I mean, yeah. that's, just, that's kind of a side, an automatic well, side. Hey, these like, everybody had some deformities they got named for. Oh, I'm dumb Donald. Oh, I'm Bucky, because I got teeth out there here. <laughs> well, this, these were just the kids that, that Bill grew up with. You know, what can mm -hmm. you say? <laughs> 
That's how he remembered them. My little brother who wears winter clothes all year round because we don't have anything else to put on him. <laughs> Russell, he'd always talk about Russell always. They'd always dress him up and he would yeah, always have those clothes. Yeah. Somehow of course, that one wasn't my favorite, though. I think, that, I think those stories went over better in Bill's stand-up than they did right. in the cartoon. Oh, yeah. Now, there was yeah. one cartoon that they did of it where they were just like in nebulous, nebulous watercolor kind of things. Mm -hmm. Now, that one was good. That one did, and that was one of the stories that he told in his stand-up. Right. And was, what about the... And we didn't have to learn a lesson from it. Yeah. We didn't have to be careful or we'd learn something. We could yeah. enjoy it. That's I right. think that was one of those first you have to learn something. Well, that was Bill, Bill, Bill has lost his doctorate. Yeah. Bill, Bill got the doctorate and all this. I thought that was his project. Well, well it was. You know, and so he had to, he had to show that there was, there was more than just... You know, mindless fun for well, fun. Mindful fun. <laughs> My favorite was probably his comedy series that he had during the 70s. It was like a, uh, a variety, well, not a variety show, really, but it was more of a comedy type show. Cos. Um, no, 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 it wasn't Cos, because Cos was when he was a school teacher. He yeah, was the a gym, gym teacher. teacher. That's the one I like. This one, this that one. Was the Bill Cosby show. Well, this, I think it was the Bill Cosby show. No, I, no I, thought, I thought the 60s one was the Bill Cosby show. Um, I well, think it was. Now, well, I like the one where he played the school teacher. <laughs> well, that was the school teacher one. Let's let let let's clarify here. Yes, thank you. Let, let me clarify this. Well, personally, I I mean, I would pick I Spy over over either of those. Okay. <laughs> I was I always enjoyed I Spy. You know, <laughs> two two swinging guys. You know, just kind of hanging out and uh, doing spying stuff and being witty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now the Bill Cosby Show here was the one where he was the school teacher. So maybe it was Cos that was the yep. the comedy one that I really well, liked. What I enjoyed was on on, on the uh, on the the Cosby Show when Robert Culp came on as the guest star. That that was a great episode. Yeah, I never mean, really liked the Cosby <laughs> Show. Well, I, see, I didn't either. But that one that I one I, I watched. Did see that one, that yeah. Cool, the I Spy reunion type thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, did they go out and track something down? Cos. Okay, it was Cos. That this, was this the comedy was, variety. This I was the one that I liked. Because they would do all kinds of crazy things. And he had this, um, this, where they would dress Don Knotts up and they would play James Brown songs in the background. And they would all be out there like musicians. And they would touch, they would touch Don Knotts when they had a James Brown scream. And it was like he wouldn't open his mouth until they was like, ah! or something like that. And they would touch him and he would open his mouth and act like he was doing it. And you know, Don Knotts, he would get in there and do this funny little dance. They'd dress him up in his temple. It was, it was kind of, it was funny stuff. stuff. And Mark Spitz was on there, and it was like, ooh, that's just how long ago it was. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Spitz, yeah, there's a name for you. <laughs> now, at one point, didn't Bill do some sort of, well, I know he did, he did electric company, but he also did some sort of thing, and they still, I don't think he's doing it anymore. Something about a magic screen type thing. I've seen this oh, every once in a while. Oh, picture pages. Picture that's pages. a picture pages thing. Yeah. Of course, I think one of the best things Bill Cosby did was the Chocolate Princess cartoon. Now, that was pretty neat. Mm -hmm. it's a, you've seen it. Okay. Oh, come on. It's about candy. <laughs> but it's subtly about racism and such. It's, it's real neat. Okay. Mm. Well. It was real. It happened. <laughs> and of course, there's always the Jello commercial. <laughs> Probably his best performance. <laughs> but anyway. Oh, anyway. Uh, it's your turn. I never got picture page. Say the truth. <laughs> never did. Well, no, because well, because it's like it's just like here, kids. Now do it. See, do it. Do it. Just just draw these lines. It's like. And the question was, w w would this have been a lot like Winky Dink, where kids were just drawing directly no, you, on the screen? No, you got screen? the pages in a magazine, oh, or you could send for them. Gotcha, gotcha. And you were supposed to but, do them but, along but, with them. But, but the question is, did kids actually try to just say, oh, forget that, I'll just draw right on the screen with my crayon? But not mine. <laughs> of course, that would explain why there are crayon marks on the TV, mm. but no, they weren't doing picture page, because that was just too easy, and they usually were standing there going, well, stupid, it's that one! And I'm like... Well, no, now, no. you see, the thing is, there. these are always aimed towards kids who are a lot younger. But then, if they're that young, they don't know how to get the hold of the <laughs> thing anyway. you got to be yeah, a little like, older to figure out how to get a hold of it. And by the time you're that old, well, then you, you don't, don't want to do it. So, there we are. <laughs> Bit of a problem. Next. We have shows where the characters traveled or took vacations. Hey, well, that what? could be just a The boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cover that <laughs> Big one, Big vacation. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Fantasy Island. <laughs> yeah. Fantasy well, but, Island. That well, was think, a vacation. That was a vacation. <laughs> well, more I think more in the idea of shows that were like, uh, 
and family type sitcoms where it's like, oh, let's go take a vacation. Gilligan's Island. Well, the Brady Bunch goes to the Hawaii, Brady Bunch. King's Island. Oh, yeah. Where else they go? The moon. The moon. <laughs> no, we no that was the honeymooners, wasn't it? But... <laughs> <laughs> they kept planning that trip and never got on the rocket. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hey, you know, the Flintstones would always go places. That's right. They'd go to Holly Rock or uh, Rock Vegas. Or <laughs> they always went off in the, uh, in the big burned plane. Tex Rock. With a stone on, yeah. on top of it. Either that or the, the, uh, the pterodactyl plane. Yeah. <laughs> They'd all be on the plane, too. On the plane. Yeah. On top of the ter On the plane. There was a lot of traveling from Bug Tussle to Beverly Hills. <laughs> Well, the cousin Pearl that, yeah. and everybody would come in. Well, the historic episode where they where they officially brought together the Beverly Hills universe and the Green Acres universe. Mm -hmm. You know that, and the, also of course the uh, Petticoat Junction thing that where uh, Granny went back to help um, Emmy Lou or Betty Lou. Betty Lou. No, Betty Joe. They Betty all had Joe, Joe middle Joe, names. Remember? Right. Joe was always the middle name. Mm -hmm. Betty Joe, Bobby Joe. Billy Joe. Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe. Moving, Moving kind of slow. slow. Dog Joe. <laughs> Kate Joe. <laughs> and Eb. Eb Joe was on <laughs> Green Acres. Yeah, well, that's all the same place. <laughs> right. I got it. But that was always a great way to, like, boost up ratings. They would oh, usually yeah. do that, like, in sweeps. Like Happy Days, where they went out to the Dude Ranch. And well, Vernon Shirley actually moved all the way to California yes. never came back. That's right. <laughs> got tired of Milwaukee. Old Milwaukee. And you know Gomer, he took a big vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the vacation found to his own show. Big old vacation. I don't think he ever came back either. Oh man, speaking of that, remember that, that we were watching we were watching since we're on vacation. We were yes. watching the Jokers Wild today. Yes. And they asked they were doing they had a category called spin-offs. And they asked Gomer Pyle, and you know what the guy answered? It was a spin-off at Gilligan's Island, wasn't it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait a minute. How can it be a spin-off at Gilligan's Nobody Island? Nobody got off Nobody that island. island. That's right. You're dope. It was like, ah, uh, uh, yeah, he gets the stupid award. Of course, well, we just like figured he never watched. He, he, he never watched TV. That's all he we can figure. He's an educated psychologist, of course, too. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, he has a well, sometimes education. you can be so smart and stupid at the same time. <laughs> Next. Next. Ooh. My gosh. What Whoa, the heck is one. this? It's a letter. Throw oh. it away. We don't have time to read no. it. Did, did we <laughs> actually? I, I don't remember if we actually looked at this one last time or not. Anyway, um, yeah. Mr. Dandridge, Mr. E. Dandridge came up with the question, what would happen if Perry Mason charged his clients before he helped them or if he had to beat somebody up to get money from them? <laughs> You're a real liar. We <laughs> 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 don't know that Okay. We don't know that he ever got paid, do we? Well, we don't. Do we like, ever see anybody write him a check? No, well, Perry was always, he was Mr. Good Guy. He's like, oh, no, here's a hardship case. I'll help you. Yeah. Oh, no, no, and everything. <laughs> everybody else is back there, Della and everybody. And Perry, um, yeah, money. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Della's like, you haven't paid me in years. What's the deal here? Della's down at the welfare department. Yes, I work for a lawyer, but he doesn't make any money. <laughs> Boy, that's TV. <laughs> you know, it has to be on TV. That's right. <laughs> Only on TV. <laughs> I mean, now they got commercials. <laughs> so maybe LA Law is kind of a backlash for Curry Mason. <laughs> so there's like money, money, money. <laughs> Every time you turn around. Money. Even if you don't. <laughs> that's right. No money. <laughs> <laughs> we spent so much time on that one. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Shows with midgets. <laughs> I don't think it's correct to say midgets. I think uh, that are people now. What is it? Uh, Wrestling. <laughs> no, no, I was trying to think of a politically correct term. Little you know. people. No, isn't it like uh, small person? Uh, no. Uh, no, it's little people. Uh, altitudinally disadvantaged or something. No, that's government talk. Oh. Okay. Little people. Oh, okay, that's what they people. be. Oh, okay, so that's okay. Wrestling. Well, yeah, wrestling. wrestling had lots of little people. Yeah, well, fantasy. And they Island were mean too. too. <laughs> they would bite. Be plain. <laughs> be plain. Be extra crispy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little herb, a little Hervé Villachez. Anything is said in Marty Croft. <laughs> this is true. This is quite true. We found we found another. What was that? Um, 
Billy and the Sea Serpent, what was that thing called? Somebody no, 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 no. Sydney and the Sea Serpent. Sigmund and the Sea Monster. Sigmund and the Sea Monster, okay. I was another one of those darn Billy Barty, not not Billy Barty, Sid and Marty Croft things. Yep. Well, if you say Sid and Marty Croft, Billy Barty probably was in it because... Somewhere or another. He was the Firefly. He was a lot of things. Because yeah. <laughs> he was little. <laughs> that one had Winky the... It was a Weenie the Genie. That's what it was. Weenie the Genie. Oh, boy. <laughs> that Sid and what a wacky couple of guys they were. Let's no, see. Let's, let's, what else? Uh, Wild Wild West. That's yeah. right. Dr. Miguelito Loveless. Loveless. Played by Michael Dunn. Just an amazing little guy. And then when they did the uh, well, the return to Wild Wild West, they had Paul Williams, Paul Williams to play yeah. Big Little Loveless Jr. <laughs> He's just been little forever. <laughs> well, and then if you talk Michael Dunn, you have to mention the uh, the Star Trek episode, Plato's Stepchildren. That's right. <laughs> he was in that one, too. The little midget. What was his name? I don't remember now. A little that. midget, rather redundant there, weren't you? <laughs> I saw this big old midget walking <laughs> down huge. the street. He was. It was a jumbo shrimp. <laughs> That's, um, it wasn't Puck, was it? No, 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 no. <laughs> I can't remember, but I know the episode. That's, that's the thing now with with uh, with Star Trek, the classic Star Trek, that they rarely show in this town, and it's through in a lot of markets. You don't, you just don't see uh, old Trek anymore. Now. Oh, I'm missing it. Look at the tears. Well, I don't miss it too much, but it, it, it's just like, gee, it's be nice every once in a while to see it again. Where's our show? Where's the show? <laughs> hey, you can buy those. Where's the show? <laughs> <laughs> show anymore. Damn it, Joe. Besides, Jean-Luc is much sexier. <laughs> I'm a sucker, not a TV producer. <laughs> <laughs> guy and... I can't tell you what they're going to show. <laughs> <laughs> so, little people... The only little person I can think of is Billy Barty. Well, it's, um, he's always on everything. Yeah. It's like when they had to cast somebody short, they just called well, him. Well, <laughs> like when they had to get somebody tall, they'd get um Ted Cassidy or <laughs> the other guy, Robert, Robert, Robert Richard Keel. <laughs> Or Andre Cousin the it. Giant. Cousin It had to be rather small. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's, he was, he probably was. It was um, Silva. What's his name? Um, Henry, Henry Silva? Silva? Well, that's the other one. Uh, uh, not Henry what? Silva, Felix Silva. Felix Zila. <laughs> Something like that. But the other one I just remembered, can't forget Tweaky from Buck Rogers. Well, Tweaky. that was Felix Zila. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I mentioned <laughs> it. Hey, Buck. Hey, Buck. <laughs> he had a... Uh, uh, um, uh, Mel Blank's voice. Mel Blank's voice, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's another one of those great science fiction characters in a suit, and he's played by some person, but we'll give him another voice. <laughs> that was just a short C-3PO. <laughs> well, kind of, but then he had Dr. Hewer around his neck. Theopolis. <laughs> Dr. Theopolis. Ah, that's Doc true. Dr. 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 Hewer was, was an actual person, that's right. Guy. Dr. Theopolis was the the little Simon video game the, he had. The, the medallion. <laughs> 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 and let's see, well then there was um in um Battlestar Galactica there was somebody in the in the Daggett suit. Right. We don't know who. Um it was unsung people who no. were usually in suits. Unsung suit wearers. <laughs> Gee. I guess wrestling was the only thing where you actually got to see their faces, huh? <laughs> And then, well, I mean, Kenny Baker, well, he did so many of those things, although he's more known for being um, R2-D2, but he he did several of the TV things also, and now his daughters are into that. Well, okay. There we are. Amazing. Well, there is a guy on Night Court. I don't remember the actor's name, but he was on there yeah. quite a bit. Oh, he okay, was him. Dan's boss. Dan's boss. Yeah. And, of course, if you watch Night Court, everybody on the show is like six feet tall anyway. Right. I mean, it's just a tall cast. Yes. Some of them I'm normally tall. Yeah. Anybody over five six I'm normally tall anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Hmm, well, by golly. But uh, he was on there. I doubt. I don't. I, well, hard pressed to of find. Of course. His wait a minute. There. The wizard. Yeah. The late um, David Rappaport. He did several that was TV a small things actor. also. Oh yeah. But I used to just I used to really like him. Yeah, he was neat. He was yeah, and he wasn't even on L.A. Law, I think. And then the, the guy mm -hmm. that the guy that was Dan's boss on Night Court, he's done several movies. In fact, they mm -hmm. um, what's that one? Time Time Bandits. He's in that. He was he was one of the Oompa Loompas. You know, there's mm -hmm. all those guys were they were there's a whole. In fact, but were they actually playing a person and not a 
<laughs> one, of them, one of them. One of them. In a, in a suit with paint on the face or anything. That's that's not too, that wasn't too common. Until, well, they started, um, who was Billy Birdie started that? Um, didn't he little start the, the Little People League, yeah. whatever it is, and, to give them better roles and everything. So, um, mm -hmm. well, let's good job, Billy. <laughs> let's move on. Favorite dumb blonde. <laughs> Favorite dumb blonde. <laughs> so many to pick from. Is is this a is that like a contradictory thing? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Let's see. Uh, well, for television, I don't know. Um, hmm. I'm kind of uh, kind of stumped actually. Well, Ellie Mae. Ellie Mae. <laughs> There's one. There's one. Then, then yeah, actually. Uh, Although she was probably smarter than Jethro, it's, um, well, well that, it wasn't her fault. <laughs> but <laughs> what an achievement that is, to be smarter than Jethro, come well, on. he had that <laughs> sixth grade education. <laughs> Eighth grade. Well, sixth grade. Suzanne Summers was pretty dumb. Yeah. But not my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, the crew thought that one was funny. <laughs> Oh my! Well, you never really, I mean, there were a lot of women that just kind of stood in the background, like uh, like Marilyn from uh, the Monsters. <laughs> yeah, but she, she wasn't was really. Dumb, though. But well, yeah, she was you just could, kind of placed in a situation, yeah. and everybody thought she was pretty strange for hanging out with these well, monster people. Yeah. Well, I thought she was pretty dumb for not realizing the situation personally. Hey, it was family. It was blood. Yeah. <laughs> and she accepted them for their um, yeah. ugliness or I think she was a great person. Monstrousness. I think she should get a peace prize or something. <laughs> Being so accepting and. Mm -hmm. But 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 the thing that bugged <laughs> me was the fact that she never. Uh, everyone else was like, "Why well, don't don't you realize what's happening here?" And she never never quite figured it out. <laughs> you know, because well, they're family. You well, know. I understand family that she was understanding, <laughs> but that, that she had no concept that there was. Something strange here. <laughs> well, if you're a little kid and you grow up with something, you figure it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's just the whole idea that family is and what all. It is normal anyway. <laughs> That's right. Normal is in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. There's <laughs> <laughs> something like that. <laughs> And remember, everything is just based on your own perception, boys and girls. So whatever you view as being the way it should be is usually the way it is, even if it's just the way it is to you. <laughs> Becoming like the, like the, the Fat Albert show. <laughs> you know, learn something for us, though. Oh, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> We're not careful. We might learn something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on vacation. I don't have to learn right now. Well, let's see here. Ooh, he digs one out here. It's Shows with time travel. <laughs> <laughs> well, time tunnel, obviously. Yeah. That'd be the first one. It's about, about time. time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Land, Land of the Lost. Well, <laughs> well, that's more of a movie. But well, but there was a... Land there? of the Lost. Land of the Lost, yeah. Land of the Lost, where they made so many horrible changes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between the old Land of the Lost and the new Land of the Lost. They, Classic they, Land of the Lost definitely gets it. <laughs> They just changed all the names and, and they messed it all up and were just boring Mark to death. <laughs> it was just funny. Um, let's see. What, uh, how many times in Bewitched did they go back and forth? Uh, oh, they brought a the lot end. into the... Near the end, with the color ones especially, they were doing that a lot. Yeah, and they were bringing a lot back from... It's like, oh, look, for dinner we're having Ben Franklin as our guest. <laughs> 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 so we can teach our children about history. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? Uh, well, my dream of genie. They do the same thing, kind of. Yeah, right? They the, usually just bring somebody, way. bring somebody from the past right. more than actually travel. Right. Um, but aren't uh, we all time travelers? I wow. guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this show is just way too deep for me. <laughs> and by golly, speaking of time, I guess our time is Ooh, just what a about segue. run out. Yikes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mr. You'll be radio Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Next time on Fast Wasteland, it's a rerun. <laughs> so, and then right after that, it's the all new, all exciting. Not a rerun. Vintage. Vintage. <laughs> Fast from the vault. <laughs> We'll see you next time. Good on, everybody! Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Fast Wasteland.